Oh man, I'm sure y'all like that. We're back, we're back, we're streaming live. It's Monday night. Missed last night. But my boy, old Jeremy Prutt, keeping that Tennessee train rolling, guys. Maybe we'll be good in about 30 years. I don't know. So, welcome to the stream. Uh, we back. We still coming here. Uh, I want to thank everyone um, for what happened Saturday night. It was absolutely you know. amazing to have... Oh, I Everyone, believe it got up to 1,100 uh, live viewers. What happened Saturday point. night? It uh, was pretty cray -cray. absolutely you know amazing anyways, to have. Uh, welcome. To uh, I Everyone, believe it got up to 1,100 uh, live viewers. What happened it Saturday happened. night? It uh, was pretty cray -cray. absolutely you know, you know there's some echo. amazing anyways, to have. Uh, welcome. Uh, I believe it got up to 1,100 uh, live viewers. What happened it Saturday night? It was absolutely you know amazing to have. Welcome. Uh, I believe it got up to 1,100 uh, lives. What happened yeah, Saturday yeah, night? Echo, it was uh, absolutely, you know, amazing, amazing to have. Uh, welcome. Uh, I believe it got up to 1,100 uh, lives. What happened yeah, Saturday yeah, night? Well, it was absolutely, you know, amazing to have. Welcome. I believe it got up to 1,100 lives. What happened Saturday night? It was absolutely. All right. So if y'all can y'all still. See if the echo's gone. Golly. Me and audio just do not mix. So, all right, we got it good. All right, evidently it was on some kind of setting where it was like repeating what was going through. So, uh, we're live. It's Monday night again. I want to thank everybody uh, that was in the chat Saturday night, not, not especially my man, Epic Eric. Um, for joining in and that was absolutely incredible to see this thing get to uh, about 1100 live viewers and it wasn't like it was a, a thousand viewers for like five minutes we held on a thousand viewers for almost an hour an hour uh pretty dang crazy so someone messaged me on in instagram and facebook that said what happened is once we got about 500 viewers or whatnot all of a sudden if you logged on to YouTube and got on sports or uh, your Xbox app, there's a little tab that says trending or live, uh, the live streaming. And Bateman Live was trending on YouTube for like 25 minutes because of how, how much traffic and everything was going. So uh, that's really crazy to think about that I made the front page of YouTube. Not the whole YouTube, but the, you know, when you get on your phone, if you just go to home, it'll give you categories. When the live category, uh, Bateman Live was trending. So hopefully this Saturday night uh, we can get it back. I don't expect to get 1,000 viewers every time, but I like to have four to 500. That's always the goal. If not, no big deal. We still going to stream. So uh, Saturday night, probably going to talk about my favorite thing in the world, and that is deep crank. So we're going to go over 10XDs, 6XDs, deep Rapalas. We're going to talk about the big old 6 cents plugs. We're going to talk about some old school deep cranks. I'm going to go over line, all that stuff. What's up, Jack Mitchell? We are staying safe, man. We have had some nasty storms come through the last couple days. My fact, matter of fact, my Wi-Fi was messing up uh, the last couple of times. But James probably gained about 90 subs, actually. Went up quite a bit. Um, it's weird. I don't get a lot of you know subs from the streams get more of those from regular videos so i need to do both what's up chad simmons go big orange go big jeremy prutt landed us another recruit uh i don't know if you guys follow college football hopefully you do it's my favorite thing uh in sports even though i root for a team that's not been good since about 2006 um i've never once and i've been following recruiting since like the jamal lewis days seen the momentum we've got right now so my thoughts on the speed in that's a good bait i'd like to get a, a couple of them it was kind of a classic deal if you guys had it's kind of like their play on a speed trap no problem chris i'll answer anytime man the og db3s i need to get a few frank dude wesley strader flat side is a freaking good one jack mitchell you know, guys ask me why I'm a Tennessee fan. I live in Kentucky. Well, my dad, he's from West Tennessee, uh, the Halls place. So is my mom. 
And believe it or not, West Tennessee is a big stronghold for the Vols. And uh, that my dad got a job at the TVA, kind of like that song by Alabama. And here we are. I grew up watching Andy Kelly and Heath Shuler. And um, my dad actually called me uh, at school when I was in like the sixth grade to let me know that Peyton was coming back. Well, Peyton didn't win a title next year. T. Martin did. So, Fat Guy Bassin, how would you deep crank with the Dobbin 705 CB Fury? Uh, to be honest with you, I wouldn't. Uh, I want to crank anything over about 12 foot with a 705 CB. It just does not have the backbone you're going to need uh, for anything that dives 15, 16 foot or deeper. So, What's my thought on the new Metanium? Uh, the Metanium is an amazing reel. I don't think I can find any negatives on it other than the price. Uh, for the money, I'm a Corrado K guy. Uh, I love the Metanium. It's definitely super smooth. It's, it's long casting. Got lots of bells and whistles. It's light, but you don't have the money, man. There is no shame in throwing a Corrado K. Stoney, yes, TW is very swamped, man. Uh, so, something I want to let guys know: they are the absolute king of online retail as for for fishing stuff. Uh, I'm not going to put the numbers out there, but listen, it is a multi multi million dollar company. And they are on a skeleton crew. So if you're ordering ones or twos of things, maybe you just order a rod or reel, you'll probably get your order quicker than a guy that makes a, a $200 order that scattered a bunch of different stuff, you know, because there's a lot, it's a lot of ground to cover. That place is huge, man. It's, it's literally the double the size of a super Walmart. And it's just fishing stuff. What's up, Phil Byrne? You must be getting a lot of time on your hands working from home or something, man. I see you in the streams a lot. I, we need to go fishing, man. Chris says, anyone looking for the Six Sense Axis? His academy is loaded, maybe 50. Uh, hit us up his PayPal. Whoa, there you go. Yes, uh, Chris, I do use a ring light. Um, I used to not use one. I used to use a like OG 500-watt halogen light. And uh, I got this ring light from a subscriber. His, uh, Matt Birch owns Birch's Tackle Shop. I've been using it ever since. So I can kind of, you know, adjust this. I can turn it way up, which I don't need. Or I, I actually like to turn it kind of down like that so I don't get a, a lot of glare. What's up, Dustin? TW almost went under twice. Ooh, I don't know about that, but I know they have almost put some other people under. Mm. What rod do I suggest for a 4.080 square bill? Uh, I would look at like a 765 uh, CB from Dobbins. Just as, you're, you're good with a 7.6 cranking rod. You don't have to get crazy expensive with that. And if you're going to throw a 4.0 and an 8.0, the reason I like a 7.6, you know, a medium, heavy, moderate, is you can even throw like a 5XD, 6XD uh cloud 15 on that do really well um but I, I would get my length up a little bit more and just get a little bit more backbone for those heavier square reels no problem swamp apocalypse i like the ring light uh, i'm probably going to get away from these webcam eventually and i'm going to get me a really nice the um camera like a dslr that i can double as a webcam just to get a little bit more clarity uh, but i'm gonna have to get my internet game up too do you have a 300 mercury four stroke holy smokes yeah we'll, we'll hit that up so lunkers and lures i used to use a loomis 959 dd uh, which is my favorite uh, deep crank rod ever um a really good one that's really hard to find is uh, a Shimano Crucial 10XD rod, the old black ones. That is a really, really good one. They are hard to find. Um, if I'm using a Dobbins uh, on a 10XD, I like an 806 CB glass. That's my favorite. I think you can even get an 805 glass, but that's my favorite. Uh, there's a good blend of backbone and tip. That tip is really, really important. And Phoenix X15 or X16 is a badass cranking rod as well. 
Heck yeah, St. Chris. I don't know what you do for a living, but I wish I could you, you watch YouTube at my work. Hey, bet man, I'd love to see Debo fishing do a live stream. Uh, yeah, that's gonna happen. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna message Debo. I'm gonna have a guest Thursday night. So I got a buddy. He fishes with. He does a lot of stuff with Six Cents. He's got a channel that's really blowing up, and uh, I kind of want to help him out. So uh, I'm gonna try to get Justin Royal fishing on here. Uh, Justin's a really cool dude. I like that he does his own thing. Um, and I'm gonna try to get Debo's on here as well. Um, and then. You know, of course, Saturday night, that's the big stream night. And I think on, uh, you know, I'm not going to put him on the spot. Get this crap out of my mouth. Had it dip in for like five hours. Anyway. Um, I'm going to try to save Saturday nights uh, to be the Epic Eric night. So if uh, Eric's available on Saturday nights, I'm going to try to get him to join. That would kind of be uh, the deal. If not, no big deal. But I'd love to start having guests on as long as you guys like it. People like Debo, get my buddy Justin Royal on here. And, man, I'll be honest with you, I've reached out to Millican Fishing, and Ben is absolutely down for it. i got to give him a little heads up. So if you guys would like to see Ben Millican on here, Hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you smash that like. So, oh, you and Eric cost me fifty David dollars on heading Super Mags Air Spook, eight inch. Dude, love love that Air Spook. Luma Flex versus Living Rubber. What's the difference between them? I'm not sure what I know about Luma Flex, but Living Rubber Rubber is the old school jig material. Mikey Balls, I've reached out to Mikey. Uh, he said he'd do it. We just, uh, and this doesn't mean mad about Mikey. Just the communication between me and him is mostly my fault. Just kind of lacking. Um, I would love to get Mikey on here and we just talk about catching big, giant bass because he is really good at that. With Dobbins, what are used for chatterbait? Uh, that would be a 736 CB glass. That's a really, really good one. Uh, some guys use a 734. I don't. I actually don't own a Dobbins rod right now, but uh, once I get stimulated, get them Trump bucks, we may have a few. What's up, Carl? Thanks for coming on on a Monday night. Yeah, so I'll probably stream uh, about every night this week. Probably not going to get Bass Geek on here, Stoney. He kind of does his own stream, and I'll, I'll let him do his own thing. Um, yeah, Mikey, uh, I'll make sure I keep Mikey awake. What's up, Kuda? Yeah, so I don't, I, I like a, believe it or not, I like a graphite rod for chatterbaits quite a bit. The only problem with the grass, it doesn't have a lot of back, or glass, it doesn't have a lot of backbone sometimes. I don't know, Luke might be big timing me, man. Uh, I could ask him. He uh, he was on Darian's stream the other night. They're big buddies, so I don't really want to, you know, encroach on anything like that. That's that's their kind of own deal. So, dude, Mark Menendez, I think I can get Mark to do a stream. He won't stay up real late. We'd have to do it, you know, earlier in the afternoon or something like that. But you know, dude, the babe, I I I'm just gonna be honest. We're supposed to uh, see him this weekend, but uh, Kyle wanted me to let guys know that he apologized. But uh, his kids are finishing up on school. They got a bunch of crazy stuff going there at the house, and he hasn't been able to finish up this big giant batch yet. It will be coming one way or another. But, you know, 40 hours a week, guys, family. And I'm going to tell you, when them kids are home and they've never been home like that, it's, uh, it's tough. So. so, Matt Allen, talk to Matt. And uh, I, I explained this. Matt said he'll do it again. He cannot right now. He's had so many people request that he just said, man, I'd love to do it. It'd be awesome. But I've made prior commitments I've had to back out of, and I'll catch a lot of flack. And I get it, man. I don't want any of these guys to, like, you know, show priority or, or turn people down and say, hey, I can't do it, and then jump on here. I don't want that to happen. So, You go go a little lighter on your chatterbait, Swampocalypse. 
uh, where you normally throw a half, throw a three eighths, and get a higher gear ratio reel. Uh, I used to, if I know I'm not around a lot of grass, around a lot of grass, I throw a six three. If I'm going to have to get that thing up, I'll go like a three eighths ounce, put a swim bait style trailer on there, and get a little faster reel. I have not heard anything on the smaller uh, flat side. I have mentioned it several times. That's kind of that's kind of what I would like to see a mutt size, you know, a 50x flat side. Uh, speaking of, you know, I'm me. I'm not going to clickbait this title. I'm not going to clickbait the title. It's not going to happen, you know. So I did get I did get some sweet baits in today. This is from Balsa Concepts. Man, these packages are freaking awesome. Get PewDiePie on the stream. Dude, if I can get... I'd really like to get Mr. Beast on here. We could probably do a hell of a giveaway. So, if Mr. Beast, you're watching. So, this is a awesome little package. You know what I mean? But, uh, dude, Hallman would be cool. Check this out. This is... Uh, I forgot the model. Didn't even say. But... Uh, these are made by Andrew Mullins, boss of concepts. He even puts, in the back of his business card, he puts the model. So this is a BCF5T, uh, a limited series, and it was made on 420. And this color is called Switchback. I like how he does that. That makes this really cool, but check this out. This is a big old flat side. This is a full bait. So it's kind of got that green... Uh, like a greenish blue back, a little gold in it, kind of like a Tennessee shad. Uh, it's got that little John style monocarta. You see the wire here below it. This is a pretty big boss of bait. It's 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 a lot bigger than a mutt, uh, but it's kind of got that pig baby pig style body. And I've got one of these. Y'all have seen it, but uh, it's not a full. Now. I did get another one. I got two of them. You see, this guy's got that blue purple back on it. Oh, yeah. I like this guy. Look at this full. Really good paint job Andrew did on this thing. Amazing craftsmanship. That's why I like these balsa baits. Sorry, my fingernail's dirty. I was working in the yard earlier today. Check that guy out. So, uh, Andrew, you can find him on Facebook, uh, Balsa Concepts. Um, he didn't pay me to put these on there or give me free baits. Uh, because I'm not a collector, I'm a fisher, but I really like, I mean, you can check out the size on them things. But it's got that full finish on them. Man, these are freaking sweet. I'm excited about these guys right here. And you know what? It may not be spring, but dude, there's a time when you can crank these fish up on these flat sides, especially in the summer. But... Shout out to Andrew Mullins at Balsa Concepts for that. And I think I'll talk to my guy over at uh, Black Label Balsa, Cliff Paces deal. And I said, hey, man, I'm fixing to order some baits, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he said, hey, uh, let's do something. So I think we're going to get some Black Label baits in here, some of the new stuff. And then I will do a giveaway. And maybe we can even get Cliff Pace in there. But, yeah, check these guys out. Just I love it. I love this simple packaging, man. It's really effective. I mean, even for just storing your balsa baits, huh, might have to get a good thumbnail right here. That's it. That's it. That's the thumbnail post right there. Go back, and grab that. So that's gonna go in the flat side box, and that's a, that's the only thing new I've got. But uh, I had a couple guys ask me about this. They said, "Hey, bait man, I thought I seen this worm before." Yeah. So this is the giant divine worm uh, that'll be coming out and I actually showed this off about a month ago uh, some people was like man I seen this worm it's the first time ever I'm like go check out my stream from a month ago but that's the big it's right at ten and a half inches divine worm uh, it's probably my hand blocking the mic I'm sorry but that's gonna be awesome for throwing on a big wobble head add on deep ledges stuff like that and it's just straight green pumpkin but I really like you see those little ribs there, man? That's the deal. And then there's this worm, and I've had it for quite a while. I've used this. I'm not a, I mean, this is cool. I'm not a huge fan of these big, long, flat tails. Um, 
that's just me but what i do like is there's just going to be a hook right here so if a fish bites it you're going to get um hooked casey's going to fire you if you keep leak, leaking that stuff i don't think casey be fire me uh as long as guys are still using that bait man cut code so i do have a bullworm uh james uh let me see if i can find it without knocking a bunch of stuff over yeah matter of fact got a few worms here didn't want to make this be turned into who didn't leak it first darren did no 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 darren didn't leak it first dan don't fall for the click clickbait uh people that's watch this channel they've seen this they saw this worm about a month ago so uh darren's a good guy but he wasn't the first on here so do black label balsam makes good stuff darren's a good kid man but uh I am going to be a little upset if he decides to brand the old Saturday Night Live because, let's just be honest, I've been doing Saturday Night Live for a long, long time. So, uh, Six Cents giveaway, uh, it ends Friday, Blake. So, kind of crazy, don't have a lot of entrance in there, but um, you got, I, I will tell you this, Six Cents is behind on shipping. Um, again, the Sea Void stuff, so if you make an order... Uh, it's going to take a, a little bit of extra time to get there, but make an order. Use my code Bateman. Screenshot, email me the uh, the receipt, and uh, I'm going to enter you into the drawing. So, but let's see. It does float, Chris. It does have some floating properties to it. So, Upton 13 inch straight tail worm. That's a beast, man. Uh, I'll personally put it on a bigger shaky head or a wobble head. Darian Biffle. What do you think about a 10-inch curly style worm on a 6-inch shaky head? I usually don't use ribbon tails on shaky head or straight tail worms. I've just never had any luck. Uh, uh, I'm just assuming you use a Texas rig. I think you get a lot more action out of a ribbon tail on a Texas rig than you do a shaky head. And I get hung up less. I, I like ribbon tails around brush piles and stumps. I'm liking the straight stuff. Uh, pretty kind of. I'm not a big brush pile fisherman. With straight worms except the mag trick worm the tw is 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 behind man so all right so this is the strike king bull worm this is the big one this color is tequila sunrise uh red flake dude kentucky lake and spot sticker go really well together jesse so this is a giant worm uh one of my buddies kentucky lake legend sam lashley he loves putting this on a wobble head um the strike king structure head and you can also use a big shaky head and i might have some we can demonstrate so the divine worm is a little bit smaller about it about an inch smaller so the bull worm is right at oh uh, they say 10 inches i don't know you have to ask my wife if that's 10 inches or not just kidding she's more on the finesse game but uh so we've got about a nine inch worm here i tell you if you wanted to make the ultimate worm all you gotta do is take this worm about where it's at and put a ribbon tail on it and i would never buy a lucky strike ringworm again because it would be that good but the bull worm is definitely thicker got a lot thicker plastic um it's a freaking killer too and then the og when it comes to og and one that does float is this is the excite uh, this color is plumpkin, so it's kind of a plum and green pumpkin mix. This is the Excite Maximus worm. Uh, Brent Anderson, uh, he has smashed them. This worm floats big time, so we compare that, the Maximus, to the Big Divine. And I don't know when this is coming out, but it's happening. Probably early this summer, but it's about nine inches. This one, this one's, of course, smooth and round. Uh, this one's got these ribs on it. Uh, really cool. Uh, let's look at the Excite versus the Bullworm. Bullworm's definitely fatter. So, if you guys don't know, uh, the Upton's uh, big 13 10 inch worm, it kind of inspired uh, the Bullworm. So, uh, this is a nasty color right here. So, Excite baits, man, they make some good stuff. Um, personally, I don't throw wobble heads a lot, but. Uh, 
oops, I put that in the wrong. I don't throw wobble heads a lot, but I know a lot of guys who do. Um, I know some elite guys that say, hey, Texas rig is dead. Is that softer than their shaky worm? Uh, they're about the same as far as being soft. Um, Armstrong, they're pretty much the same texture. And I'll be honest, the ribs, uh, the ribs are stiff enough. They're not, it doesn't tear up. That Lucky Strike ringworm is so soft, though. Like, if they're biting it good, man, I, I go through like four bags a day. Take it on the road. Dry sense of humor and great delivery. Well, I don't know about that. I would like to do some trips and uh, be able to, you know, stream from different places. Like, I, I'd like to go over to Fishing with Milliken and we do a live stream at uh, with Milliken and all that, and who knows? I love the Bella stick. It's pretty awesome. Looking for a place that still sells Excalibur lipless cranks. Uh, you're not going to find a lot of that. You may just run into a random mom and pop store that's got some, but that Bellows gill is nasty um, on a free rig. It's good at flipping bait. It's actually a really good weighted jig trailer. Um, I've never fished a giant storm like that size. Do you get more short strikes? I do get a lot of short strikes on a big worm. And, and it's kind of crazy, though. If you watch Tactical Bassin's underwater video, how the bass will eat it real quick and then spit it out. And sometimes when you're fishing, I think when you're feeling those double thumps, it's actually the fish spitting it out on a second tick time. Darius, I saw those smallies, man. Don't be holding out. Don't be holding out. But um, the Black Dog Bait giveaway is still going. I think we got 300 something likes. So I told you guys if we get 400, I'll throw in some swim baits and draw two winners. One grand prize and one small prize. So I got to get the post office tomorrow. I've got stuff I got to get shipped. Because I would like to do one to two giveaways a week. You know, so... Favorite crankbait for under five foot. Mmm. Mmm. A Crush 100X or a Spro Little John MD? That's probably my favorites. And Lucky Craft BDS. Dude, look at this hair, guys. Woo, it's getting rough. What's a good bait after a rain? Ooh. Well, since fish are already wet, I tend to actually like a buzz bait in the rain or a frog after the rain. Top water is usually really good after the rain. Yes, the two XT rods are good rods. Um, when you get in that mullet, I've already had a mullet. So, yeah, man, Jack Mitchell, absolutely. We'll get a Strike King giveaway. Uh, I'll reach out to my man over at Strike King, see if we can't get that to happen. Definitely can get it. We've got these Spro Deep Divers. You're going to see some of these Saturday night. So we're going to get some Spro. We're going to have a big Deep Diver giveaway. So I'll have some Striking, some Six Cent, some Spro, you name it. AD Wake, good bait. Got one right here. The Movement AD Wake. I'm going to tell you, if you can't pick out a color, just get bone. Uh, I know it's Ben caught a bunch of good fish on this thing, too, the other day. So, I've got two. So, this is the regular movement, and this is the 80 wake. Now, I've got unorganized somehow. You got a crush 100 in the middle of all this mess. I'm going to tell you a bait that's a sleeper right now. We've got a shad spawn coming up. Is this, this guy right here. The mini mag from Six Cents. Dude, right now, shad spawn. These bass are feeding on gizzard shad about this size. This guy right here is absolutely nasty. And this is sleeper shad. Like I said, it's a sleeper bait. So it's kind of got the scales on it. It's got that shad pattern. 
Oh man, this thing right here is nasty. What's up, Sean Myers? Where's the crappie stash? Uh, you know what, Mr. Drake Toby? I'd love to get into crappie fisherman fishing. My father-in-law's in it big, but just for something about it, just doesn't do it for me right now. Uh, maybe that's something with uh, Bakeman Jr. I'll really get into in the future, but you know, it just doesn't interest me a whole lot right now. I gotta put these up. So I'll tell you what Bakeman Jr. has been doing. He's been coming in, sneaking in the bait room, grabbing baits, taking them out of the package, and laying them around the house. So. Yes, Josh, the Sammy 85 and 65 are really, really good. Let's see. Spro is their own company. Uh, so it's Spro, Gamakatsu, uh, Sunlon. They're kind of all tied in together, but Spro is their own company. Uh, what box do you keep uh, deep cranks in? Good recommendation. So um, I'll keep that for Saturday, but I'll show you how I've got my. I got two boxes. I got a Bass Mafia a deep crank box, and then I use a Bass Mafia Double Deep 3700. Uh, Spark Shed. Yes, I have used them. Uh, this color AU, if you notice, I've only got a few in here, but I've got another. I actually used to store swim baits in Plano boxes. I don't do that anymore. I honestly keep them in the package and put them in like a Bass Mafia money bag because the tails being messed up on swim baits are the number one uh, reason they won't work right. But I like that Spark Shad pretty well. It's a very good, it's kind of got a finesse swim to it, and they don't see a lot of them here, and I, I like that bait. What's up, Sean Seaball? I don't have a pad crusher frog. I'm going to try to grab some frogs because we need to do a just straight, straight up frog show. What, uh, let's see. Make sure I'm not missing any comments. Whoa, we got 172 people watching on a Monday night. Uh, that's crazy. Again, I don't think we're going to get a thousand, but that's okay. What's up, Justin Cook? Uh, so if you're new to the channel, smash the like button for me. Uh, should be right above my head on this side. Should be a little thumbs up. Hit that. And then down here, there's a button that says subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, so we get some cool content. So got a video with Matt Robertson. I'm going to try to get done. Um, maybe put it up tomorrow night and do one of those video premieres where I can kind of stream or, or get in the chat while y'all watch and then we'll stream afterwards or something. So I just don't want to mess up the uh, YouTube algorithm. Aaron Paulson, favorite big bluegill glide bait. Mm, it will really, I don't have one, but from everything I know, the uh, bull gill from Mike Buka. Uh, that's the one, the, uh, the bull glide in the bluegill pattern. That is 100% the deal. And dude, my guy at Tackle Craft, TK, has painted up some nasty, nasty uh, bull glides. You know what? I actually kind of like the looks of the 13 Fish and Trash Panda. Um, I need to actually get a bunch of their baits. Um, you know, I'm not sponsored by 13, so I'll give you all the real deal on it. But, you know... Uh, I'll be honest, uh, Fluke Master told me they're pretty good baits, and I kind of trust his opinion because he is definitely critical. Um, when we've talked, you know, in, in private, he's definitely been critical about some of their stuff, and not in a bad way, constructive criticism. So he did say that that frog was pretty good. So, BR XCS 100 and 200. That is a remake of the Excalibur, which, you know, the same company. Uh, Pradco Jack, they own uh, Excalibur, so I think it's the same mold, so I'll have to check it. All right. Whoo, got to get caught up on these questions, boys. This chat's going faster than a Bray Anderson Super Spook. Uh, I saw the new Booyah Square Bill the other day, Bass Pro Shot. Look cheap, nothing like the old. Chances are, it's a, if it's not, I'm going to have to buy them. I don't want to say it's the same mold until I see it, but... Uh, John D. let me know, Bass Pro has a heck of a sell on KVD square bills. Um, they've got some Bass Pro exclusive colors y'all might want to check out. So, I remember Mega Strike Spinnerbait, dude, Chris. That was a really, really good spinnerbait, believe it or not. 
True Bass Swim Bait helped me win on Lake of Egypt. Thanks, Selzy. Congrats on your win, Martin. Like I said, I'm going to get me a few True Bass in. Uh, people keep telling me uh, how good they are, uh, and, and I don't mean it's negative, so please don't roast me. But back in the day, the ones I had, I just personally was a Bass Tricks guy. And to be honest, I could catch more on a Bass Tricks, and I think a lot of that was um, me and my confidence. Um, I didn't like the, the True Bass because they're either real small or real big. I like that in the middle sign. Yeah, Bass Tricks uh, is out of business. Uh, well... They're not really out of business. They just quit pouring swim baits. Um, and Bruce is really getting up in age. I don't know how much longer he could keep doing that. But, uh, man, they'll always hold a special place in my heart. And, you know, that's just how it goes in the industry. Um, a lot of companies that pour out of their garage and stuff like that. So, But, dude, got to say it. Hats out to Bass Tricks. As if it weren't for Bass Tricks. Uh, we want to have True Bass. We want to have the Berkeley Power Bait Hollow or Scottsboro Tackle. One of the most influential baits ever made, in my opinion. But I'm glad now we uh, got lots of options out there. So, um, Dan, there's probably a few, but you know what? My YouTube analytics says most of my viewers are from 21 to 40 years old. So I have a feeling a lot of guys, guys know what the trick is. Working class cereal does make awesome swim baits. I need to put those to work. So, top five most influential baits. That's a whole nother video, but um, I could if it would be easier for me to narrow it down the last twenty years or so. I think some of those Berkeley line of top orders are really good. I like the Chapo and the Cane Walker. That their little wake bait is very very underrated. It's really good. Uh, I know a lot of people say, oh, they copy this, copy that. And it is what it is. Um, at least they didn't go Guggen Baits and just go to the same factory and put their name on it. Martin, how is Egypt Fishing? And Jack Mitchell, thank you for that $5 make you holler, man. I appreciate it. I got your email, too. Uh, I just forgot to respond. Are they moving a bait shop to Draftonville? Not that I know of. Well, where I used to work, Frank, they moved uh, to Drivenville. Nothing new. Gambler Easy Vibes. I've got some uh, Gambler Big Easies up here. Uh, what color is that? This is a good one. What is this? If you go down to Lo Lake Okeechobee, I'm going to tell you guys, this is the deal. Copperfield, man. I think Mikey Balls would agree. If you're going to throw one big, easy color at Okeechobee, Copperfield. I like Gambler stuff. Uh, oh, God dang. They put some stink on that stuff. Thanks, Dan the Man. I, I appreciate you. Appreciate you joining in like everybody else. Uh, I get bored. Uh, be back to work next Sunday. Still took another... Took some time, man. We, we still got a lot of things going on here. So, all right. You know, I'm really critical of live target. If you can find these still, this is a good swim bait. I don't know why. This is the Threadfin Shad one. But there's something about this bait, other than a shitty packaging that I can't ever get open. Tackle Warehouse usually does have a memorial sale, but man, this guy right here does get bit, and they make a gizzard one. For some reason, you're not going to get a lot of action out of it, but you can burn it, and that tail just... And this still is... That's how I catch them on this thing, is burning it. I don't know why. Schooling fish throw it in schooling fish. And just burn it. It works good. But that's about all the live target stuff. Uh, and they're just OG frogs good. But I don't know why I thought of that. So. Pride Code did let go of some people, man. Zell's gone. Alton's gone. Uh, a few others, man. It's kind of a, a, a bad deal. But I don't know if it's just an MLF thing or what. But I'm going to be honest. 
I don't think these companies should be playing politics like that, taking one um, <laughs> core anglers over another. I would just look at uh, the sales. And you know what? If the MLF guys aren't making the needle move, so be it. But I agree, James. I kind of heard that last week, Martin, but I don't. I don't like to. Uh, I wasn't real sure on that. Uh, I'm not going to say I want. I'm not. Didn't, wouldn't want to talk about it, but it was just kind of there. Uh, I feel like the info I had on the Triton deal is a whole lot more solid. Matter of fact, I got a lot of people that reached out to me on that deal and were like, "Hey, man, I'm a." dealer or i do this or do that i'm involved in the boats and that's a 100 percent gonna happen deal um now i don't expect triton boats to just shut the plant down right now and stop but you know dan that's it that's an interesting point um i feel that and this isn't you know negative on boyd duckett or major league fishing but it's almost like a pete pete rose gambling on baseball uh now I like Pete Rose. He should be in the Hall of Fame. It didn't change the outcome of any scores, but there is a little bit of conflict of interest there when you're fishing and you're part owner of the company. But you know, as long as you know everything checks out and nothing's you know, you know, it's not like Boyd's uh, making cuts. So I'll have to check that out. I like Dan. He's one uh, one guy I really respect for fishing skills. Uh, Eric. You know, he's won on Kentucky Lake. He's won away. He's won Angler of the Year. He's a family guy. So I got a lot of respect for Mr. Moorhead. Even though I couldn't beat him but like one time in a Tuesday night tournament. You show up to a Tuesday night tournament, Dan Moorhead and Terry Bolton in the boat together, you better be on them. Mm. So my top spinner, what happened with that rod is they made a bunch of rods and they hit dealers and stuff and they had a lot of breakage and instead of just, well, we'll, we'll, we'll just let what's out there and we'll deal with it. They went and bought up the rods back from all the dealers and have redesigned it and they will be coming back out you know, with that new version of the Levante. Yeah, I'm here, Clay. I'm just out here helping Jeremy Pritt recruit. See if any of those four or five stars are watching the channel. Uh, go, go by the big orange. Dan, that's probably an issue. Thoughts, <clears throat> thoughts on the Lake Fort flipping tube for Kentucky Lake, dude. Lake Fort flipping tube is OG, Frank, and it catches them. It really does. That was kind of like. <coughs> my first um i'd flipped a tube and kelly jordan gave me some and said try these and uh man i liked them they made uh that sour grape color and they make a really good bluegill color which is kind of now that tilapia style and that's that's a really really good bait what's the best value rod and reel on the market a shimano slx is really good for the money and a dial uh, to two a CT um, value on the rods. There's lots of good ninety nine dollar, one hundred ten dollars. Um, Dobbins Fury to Tula XT. Um, there's some. I like those cheap forty nine dollar favorite rods. Y'all might be mad at me, but for forty nine bucks, they're really not that bad. Um, Shimano SLX rod. Uh, lots of good stuff, man. You don't have to spend a lot of money to have a good setup anymore. Pal Inferno, Pal makes good stuff. Uh, do Phoenix Feather? I don't know if you guys have ever messed with a Phoenix Feather. They're like 120 bucks. Holy shit, they're a lot. They're nice. I used to like the Phoenix uh, M1s. Those were really good. Or Mac, the Phoenix Maxima rods were good. Will you elaborate on the Triton deal? So, again, like I addressed, this is just the rumor um, that was kind of going around. 
and I think there's a lot of legs to this, is that basically a Triton will be ending their fiberglass production. Uh, they're only going to fulfill uh, paid orders, dealer orders for right now um, that have already been processed. So in two or three months, if you want to go to order one, it's, it's going to happen. Uh, uh, so people's reached out to me and said that Ranger and Triton, uh, they're going to kind of converge their aluminum uh, boat stuff into one. So that's all I know. I couldn't tell you all the other details and stuff like that but that's just what i was, I was told so uh, tfo rods aren't bad uh, the uh, temple fork outfitters is the name of gary loomis's uh, blank company so shimano intenza is a really good rod now and the daiwa air are good so over 200 on a monday night what's up thanks guys smash the like button for me all right, the problem I have with MLF, they were touting no entry fees, but the pro circuit guys have to pay just as much in entry fees as the bass guys, and they don't have the sponsor money. Well, the MLF and the FLW Tour are different. The Bass Pro Tour is no entry fee, so you're getting rewarded for fishing the Bass Pro Tour with, with no entry fee. You see what I'm saying? It's a two different deal. So... Uh, man, FLW need need some help, man. It, it always did, and it it if Major League Fishing didn't buy out FLW, I don't think they would have fished this year. I'll be honest with you. I, I've heard that from several different people. So, and they're literally like three miles down from my house. So, I got pretty good track record with some guys over there. Falcon lowriders are good. I'm gonna go grab me some Blue Mountain Dew. I'm jacked up, son. We jacked up on Blue Mountain Dew. Uh, new sp Mountain Dew reached back out to me and they said, you know what, bait man, you got over a thousand viewers. We're going to send you a case of Baja Blast. You just got to mention it on your live stream and we'll give you a coupon for 15% off. Uh, we'll, we'll do better than squirt and you just got to tag us on all social media platforms. So I said, sure, man, I love Mountain Dew. I'll buy a case at 15% off. And, and give you a shout out up on the channel. So shout out to Baja Blast Mountain Dew. This is the OG. It's even got the Taco Bell logo on it. So you know when you buy, get stuff at Taco Bell, they give you all those packs of free sauce that you're definitely on tackle. You, you have made the Taco Bell Pro Staff because you got free sauce. Just to let you guys know. When you go buy Taco Bell, say, hey, I got a bunch of free um, packs of sauce. I'm on the Pro Staff. They will give you more free sauce when you order. So it's pretty amazing how that works. Hella bass pro staff, baby. That's what I got to tell you. When you're on that Mountain Dew pro staff, you get the Baja Blast. Squirt, I ain't playing with them no more. Dude. I'm going to tell you, I love Taco Bell, but I cannot eat it before a tournament or we will be in Taco Hell the first um, 30 minutes of the tournament. I am a dork, Jack. I appreciate it, but I know you love me. so I throw some tequila in there. I'd like to wake up in the morning. So Falcon makes some good rods, man. I like their expert series. Uh, the Kara was amazing. But. Yeah, pro tip, don't eat Taco Bell uh, the night before a tournament. Um, it, it, it's, it's weird. Taco Bell, there we go, I like that. Some men are into the squirt, some are. Hey man, the squirts, squirt's not bad. Dude wipes, yeah man, if, if you do Taco Bell before a tournament, bring some dude wipes. 
Oh boy, pimp boy pimping the rods. Bait man, what happens if you're a co-angler and have to sheet when you're on the water? You better learn how to grip fiberglass really, really well. Uh, it's been a long time. Get Matt Allen and Tim Little on one of my podcasts. I'd love to. Uh, like I said, they've got other stuff they uh, have told guys they couldn't commit to and don't want to interfere on that. So They are on the beds here, that's for sure. Uh-oh. Oh, snap. I was fixing to get cray-cray in here. Oh, my. Look, look, look what this kid's got. Who told you you could get my get my Mountain Dew? I got, I got a different one. I just got it earlier. Dude, it's too late at night for you to drink Mountain Dew. Like, when I made my bed. After that. He made his bed, cleaned his room, and then he got him a Mountain Dew. Show, smile at the camera so they can see your teeth. Smile. What happened here? He ain't got no dang gum teeth. He's like a little lizard. And he's drinking Mountain Dew. What is wrong with... Dude, seriously, you can't have Mountain Dew. Okay. Because it will jack you up and you will not go to bed. I can't. All right. Thank you. So, what do you want to talk about, Batman Jr.? I don't know. You don't know? We are showing off that big worm. What do you think about that big worm? Good. Good? Think you catch a few janks? Mm. No. You don't think you catch some janks? Mm -mm. Got that net bait hat. Were you ever got on Kentucky Lake uh, Big Red Bass? I got it at night for about a year and a half, two years. I didn't really advertise it or nothing. I just took a few select people out. Huddle House Pro. That's right, Frank. I loved the Huddle House after, before a tournament, man. That one in Katawa. Oh, yeah, that one's good. Show us some custom painted cranks and lipless. I really don't have a lot. I do have an 8XD I have cu custom painted, uh, but I don't really have a, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't have a lot of custom painted stuff. Uh, I pretty much do so good on stock colors that unless something goes out of stock, I don't really uh, worry about it. You and Epic Eric need to go full-time podcast like Bass Talk Live. Oh, looky here. Batman Jr. found one of my favorite skirts. That is Baxter's bug. Oh, Frank. Frank Hazling tell you, that one will catch some janks right there. I need to get the case at six cents to make this for me. What? I said I found it. You found it? Yeah. Still wearing my pee pants. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm all jacked up in Mountain Dew. Chip, I will come at you like a spider mine. Great movie. Uh, let's see. I feel like 8XD is the only stepchild of the XD series. Why is that? I will agree with you. It has a bad, uh, it has the stepchild rep in the cranking world, although I catch their tail on it. But um, the problem is the 6XD a dive on 10 pound floor at about 20, 21 foot. 10XD is going to get you 25, it will, it will cover from 15 foot to almost 30 foot. So the H just kind of in the middle there. And they're kind of inconsistent. I'll get one that I can get down to 22 to 24 foot. And then the next one won't even dive 18 foot. So it's just really weird. To, but, man, I have smashed them on there. But the 8 has the profile of the 6. The 10 has the profile of the Series 5. That Series 5 is nasty. Let's see. Willow Pond uh, at Ken Lake is still in business. Eric Arthur just drove by there the other night. It is still there. They're still doing business right now. Of course, it's uh, curbside, order only. But as soon as we get all this covoid stuff, they'll be back like normal. So, rod and line set up for deep cranking. Ten pound Sunline Assassin. Uh, I like a Loomis 959 DD or a 806 CB Glass uh, for 10 XD and plus. Uh, if I'm throwing up at a 6 XD, uh, a 7.6 to 711 medium heavy uh, moderate cranking rod, I do. Jaint Juice shirt. Well, I have a Jaint's shirt, but uh, maybe we can do a little Jaint Juice. I don't know how I'll figure out how to do that. So, Dude, I DT-16, I've won more money on that crankbait uh, for deep cranking than any of them. It is nasty. What kind of hooks do I recommend for River to Sea Biggie? Um, I'm an owner guy. Um, 
So I go ST41 owners. If everyone says I'm crazy for 10 pound, but man, uh, I'm telling you, there's there's people that are afraid to lose their baits, and there's people that want to catch fish. Put me into the I want to catch fish category. So, bait man or Paul Boss Extreme BX Brack Six. That's a good little bait man. It really is. Thoughts on ducket rods? Uh, actually, I'll tell you this: they got some models that are pretty good. Uh, I do like the white eyes too, and uh, those Jacob Wheeler or Silverado rods aren't bad. Uh, but that Terex rod ain't bad. But they've got a couple models that, and because they're so parabolic, you know, it might say this is a flipping stick or this, but it turns out to be a pretty good scrounger rod or a you know hair jig rod because the way they bend. Uh, you, there's one model, you, it's a really good hollow belly rod, even though it doesn't say that because they got so much parabolic bend to them. Um, 10 pound won't snap on a backlash with 10XD. Trust me, it's happened before. So here's a, here's the deal. You cannot throw a 10XD like you would a lipless crankbait or a square bait and just, you're not trying to, just rear back and whip it. It's almost a slow lob, and you really get the momentum of the bait with the bend in the rod, and you fling it out there. As I see guys trying to throw an 8XD, a 10XD, a big six cents, and they're trying to throw as hard as they can, and they snap their line, or they, they break the rod. If you would just kind of get to let the natural momentum of the bait, and really almost like a big swim bait, and just get a good fast lob out there, it's about the angle, you get too low it's gonna it's it's the best way i can uh describe it it's kind of like golf you know if you can take a driver and you don't have to swing it real hard to hit the ball far as long as you make solid contact if you try to swing too hard and you miss part of the ball you slice and go off but if you would just a consistent good lob with a 10 xd or a cloud nine and get it a whole lot farther especially when you got light line on it so Man, Assassin is the Chuck Norris of Florida. It's good stuff. Now, hey, if we crank a lot of muscle beds and stuff like that, you do have to retype. Absolutely. Fritz side is a great crankbait, so. Go into shaky heads again, wait and hook set up. Man, I, I'd love to do that. I'm more of a, I like, uh, I just moved my shaky head box somewhere, so I'll, I'll bust that out real quick. So I've got several good shaky heads on the board. These are kind of my go-tos, man. I don't uh, go too crazy. Let me find a place to put this. So I throw shaky heads like so. This is the six in. This is the three eighths divine shaky head. You see, it's got a big screw lock. It's got a wide gap hook in it. We might as well just get us a divine worm and stick it on here. Oh yeah, we'll get all grass candy. Colors nasty for Kentucky Lake uh, and Barkley Lakes. This grass candy color, just an amazing one. So, basically, what you're going to do, and when you buy these from Six Cents, you can also get these in a six aught. This is just the standard, like four aught or five aught hook, but you can get even bigger. So, I'm going to take my screw. Y'all can see this here. What I actually like to do before I do that, I take a piece of scissors and I want to cut that nice and flat on any worm get that round part off because then i can start my screw right into the plastic Boop. and one trick is you can also wet the worm get a little softer but this is the six inch one down there and then just pinch your worm 
effect there. And there you go. You're almost Texas rig. That'll work fine. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight because the guys on Pro Tour that don't use the screw locks, they kink their worm up. But uh, that's got a real flat head right there. You see that it's flat and it's going to kind of help this bait stand up as it's going. Now, me personally, I use a round ball a lot. I don't think round balls get hung up that much. I don't use a real heavy weight unless I'm using really big worms. Now, if you want to fish really deep, you can get to that 5 8 version of this, but that's pretty nasty. Um, but this isn't a giant hook. This is actually the the 7.0 uh, Divine uh, Worm. If I was throwing a smaller 6.2 inch, I would definitely use this 3 8 size head. My tip for shaky head is, especially on these straight tail worms and stuff like that, these more finesse style worms, use the lightest weight uh, you can get away with. If you can find some tungsten neds, those are great too. But uh, this one here is kind of my OG favorite. This is the Reaction Innovation Screwed Up Jig Head. They don't make these anymore. They're hard to find. But um, let's see if I got another color we can rig up here. If we got any good colors. Oh, yeah. We got we got to see what this guy looks like right here. Now this is one I haven't talked about. This is the spot sticker. Um, shaky head and this has got the long hook in it um, which I like it's a little bit longer it's actually this if we look at the reaction innovations it was discontinued and then here's the spot sticker you notice the spot sticker is a little bit longer this has been my go-to for a long time this is a quarter ounce Picasso love this one but it has a small hook but it hooks the janks Canterbury heads really good especially around boat docks What's what speed of reel on big cranks you want power speed? I want a combination of both. That's why I like 6.3. I may be buying a D5 off eBay if it don't get a Cronart D5 if it don't get stupid. Uh, check out Bluegrass Magic here, man. This is a good freaking looking worm. Again, I'm going to cut off this little, little round part here because once I pair this up, I will do it, Jack. We're going to try to put this spot sticker up on this. Dude, Ryan Coleman makes so much good stuff. Great guy. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about right there. Now that, my friends, is what I would love to throw. i got my, my hook point just barely poking out there. That's why I like the ribs on this thing, man. You kind of get away with your hook point sticking out because these ribs covered up. Dude, that right there in a brush pile would be nasty around a boat dock. Oh, yeah. So I like, whoa, I like round ball heads. The problem, footballs are really nice, but they get hung up in brush so bad. And I fish a lot of brush, so I, I like the, the round ball. Or if I'm on a, 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 around a lot of gravel and stuff like that, I'll go with something like that. I like the stand-up head style when I just want to let that bait sit there and not move it a lot. Maybe we do hit 300. That'd be nice. But this color, uh, Clayton, is called a Bluegrass Magic. Now, I didn't design this one, but I did tell Casey, man, you got to have you a Magic Crawl-like color. I really like that. What about the hook styles for the shakes? I'm, I, I'll, I'll be honest, man. I'm a just straight... Uh, I like the straight shank for the most part. EWGs like this are nice, especially when you have a bulky bait. Or you throw, you know, you can get these with like a 7 out worm. Uh, Dan Handcuff, you should be smashing that like button anyway. But, dude, you, the cool thing is if you buy big worms, you can always cut them down to be smaller. Um, I don't know. I really like these divine worms. Uh, I got to get some more in plum. Because that time it's fixing to be here, uh, Frank Hazley, it's about time to get on them ledges, you know. The first worm color uh, is called Grass Candy. 
Dude, Fluger makes good reels, man. Believe it or not, I used to uh, throw quite a few of them. But those are kind of my go-to shaky heads, and this is a this one's a sleeper right here. This is uh, the Savior head from Omega. I really actually like this one really well with small finesse worms uh, or small little crawls. This this Omega head, uh, it's really really good. I believe it's called the Savior. I could be wrong. It's Savior or Scorpion head. It is really, really good. Yes, I have used the Rhino Shaky Head. Uh, not a big fan of it. That's just me. I um, couldn't get a hook in a lot of fish. I don't know why. I'm not Aaron Martins, though, so don't let me tell you not to buy it because he's a heck of a lot better fisherman than me. So who am I to say whatever Aaron Martins made sucks? I know I love the regular round ball Picassos, man. They're really, really good. And uh, that greenfish creeper head is good, and so is the spot sticker. Why have my six cents divine worms been tearing without any fish catches? I don't know. I tear a lot of worms without catching fish on them. Uh, I will tell you guys this. A shaky head will also tear your worms really bad, because if you're trying to cast them like a big old plug, uh, you'll tear worms. I've took tore zooms, power worms, uh, all that. When you put a hook through it, it's going to tear, man. And you're making a weak point anytime. What's up, Joe Loki? Thoughts on the Perfection Shaky Head? I like it. I like the design. I've used one. Caught some fish on it. It doesn't have a giant hook in it. Um, I'll be honest. I don't even know if it matters. It has those little wires on the bottom. It's a pretty good little head. But anytime you get these segmented worms... Um, like, I throw this Lucky Strike original ringer, and there's a reason I have, like, 50 packs of these things. They just don't hold up. But, man, I catch a lot of fish on them, so I'm in the boat. I like to catch fish. Um, that's why I use 10-pound test on a 10XD. There's a trick to that. There's a reason. It's more than just light line, but that I'll probably never put on the screen, but. And David Dudley's shaky head is the perfection shaky head, or what he puts for retail, anyway. The long worms are nice. Alright, I'll put these back up so I don't get crazy. Best drop shot rod. Holy, you're going to have to ask Travis Manson on that one. Um,. Uh, I've got the Daiwa Tatula Elite, uh, the the Cody Meyer rod. It's badass, Aaron, but I'm not a drop shot expert. Uh, the only one I've owned before that um, was a Dobbins. It was like a 762. So Zodius is a good drop shot rod. X Pride, all that stuff. But Travis Manson, any of those big smallmouth fishermen, they're a lot better. Um, the Shimano X Pride is a really good one. Uh, the Poison Ardina, uh, they make, that is a hell of a drop shot rod. I don't really have anything crazy. Oh, yeah, if you want to go big time, check out these big hog farmer uh, shake heads. These are for the bullworms and stuff like that. Uh, I don't usually go this heavy. Uh, this one's like three quarter, but if you want to go that heavy, that's what. What's the worst thing that's happened to me on out on the water? Well, I shit myself, if you won't be honest with you, Jacob. It happened. It happened and when a, a long time ago. I just could not make it to the bank, bud. It's going to happen. So. I think Mountain Dew wants me to be more like Danica Patrick, all sexy-like, and drink from the can. I may get dry. We'll know tomorrow. Man, Phoenix makes good rods. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to order a feather. I really like the new M1s. Hey, man, anybody on here or in this stream that has never pooped in their pants, one, I'd like to be you, but two, it's happened, man. There's no way to be shame about it. We pooped in our pants when we were toddlers, you know, when we were growing up. Little kids, man. 
you're just gonna have to clean it up and go back to what you're doing. If the fishing's, I mean, I'm not gonna ruin my fishing day because my bows weren't working. I'm gonna go back to fishing. I'm not gonna do it on stream now. You know, I'm not gonna put myself on stream, but there might be a few. Uh, Chris, I I've told you the same thing. You ask every night, where's the Daiwa reels? They ain't sending them. Uh, Daiwa's not shipping a lot of stuff right now, so um, we'll see. If I don't get them, then I'll buy something else. You know, don't tell me you're gonna send me a bunch of stuff and don't follow through. I'll just go buy a competitor. But no, I'm gonna buy. I'll buy them out of my pocket. I'm just, uh, you know. You know, when people say they're gonna give me something or, or take care of me, I don't push. I don't push their buttons because it's totally up to them. You know, which little John size do I think is the best? Uh, I like the little John MD. I I like that. The one with the uh, clear build, the one that dies about six to eight foot. I'd imagine Team Cook. I busted myself in the mouth and broke a tooth when my hand slipped off a hook. See, I could see that. The, yeah, I want the uh, Tatula pitch flip myself. Well, I'm glad I've got you guys to talking about pooping your pants. And let's just be honest here. It happens. So, I cracked my pants in third grade in the cafeteria. I can't remember how, but looking back, it's hilarious. I always joke with my friends. I mean, hey. Peeing in your pants is cool. Call me Miles Davis. Uh, I don't use a creature bait very often on a shaky head. If I do, and I showed the other night, Eric, uh, Epic Eric on here, I like to put a beaver on a shaky head. Man, it catches them. Um, I know some guys that throw a man bear pig on a little shaky head and do really, really well. Um, but that's what's cool about a shaky head. You can kind of experiment. I know guys that use a, a pack of slim or a pack of crawl. Dude caught an eight pounder on my channel on a black and blue baby packa on like the ugliest looking shaky head I've ever seen. So, A22 DSR is an amazing drop shot rod, Carl. Very good one. I know some guys, you know, you can cut a creature bait in half and make a drop shot uh, out of it. So, this is kind of how the KVD dream shot came available. Guys were taking a beaver bait. Uh, this is the prawn. You can do the same thing, and they were basically taking it, cutting it. Check this out. I'm glad I got bags full of these. I'm gonna cut my prawn in half. Make a drop shot, two drop shot baits out of it. So we'll cut it right there. Pull this apart. Cut that off there. I'm gonna cut. See what I'm doing here? I'll cut that off here now. Check that out. I have a hell of a drop shot bait. I'm just being honest with you. And that is how the Strike King half shell was born. Very similar. Almost got the hand pour look to it. Dude, now that I'm telling you, that's that bluegill gill dust color. That's a badass looking color for drop shot. That is nasty. That's like a goby. Some purple on it. No, this ain't power shot. This is normal drop shot, man. That it's not it doesn't have to be that you can use that on a normal drop shot. Uh, I think people are scared to put big baits on a regular drop shot. It works, man. I, I use the regular size uh, robo worm. Yeah, yeah, it looks very similar to the Beast Coast drop shot, but you can tell if you mold these together you'd have you a little flipping bait but if you're in a pinch you're out flipping and decide hey are these bass are out deep i don't have no drop shot bait baits cut your beavers your d bombs or whatever you want to right down the middle and you have a good little drop shot bait and that is really how the strike king half shell was born because a lot of pros were cutting the smally beavers in half now i gotta put this up I don't know what I done with my box, dude. Four eleven on the stream tonight. 
Monday Night Raw. I got a Bateman Raw coming up, but I can't be on here too late tonight. I've got to help my son with his schoolwork tomorrow. There you go. So I've got like three different terminal boxes. I kind of put all my shaky heads and, and stuff like that in this Bass Mafia one. Um, there's no, absolute no way I can get everything I need into one box. So 334 people, guys. We getting turned it on YouTube again or what? I'm not going to be able to stream, but for about 10, 15 more minutes, though, that's that's the problem. So let's answer some questions. Let's make fun of somebody. Maybe we sh should we make fun of Bama fans? Should we make fun of the Googans? I swear if you dirtbags don't like this next 20 seconds, I'll mean mug you the rest of summer. I'll put that unibrow right up in the camera. Don't think I won't do it. So, I don't want to make fun of David Dudley, but he is a he is an outside-the-box. He is crazier than a jacked-off bird dog. And to be honest with you, a lot of the stuff he says on YouTube, people are like, I don't know about it. Dude, he believes that stuff, and he has won a lot of money, so am I to tell you that David Dudley is full of shit? No, he believes that stuff, and to be honest with you, I like it because he's not trying to tell you everything that the bait companies or this company wants to shove down your throat. He tells it like it is, so I got a lot of respect for Dudley. He's won a shitload of money, so... Oh, man, Vincent and uh, Dudley must, they, uh, show, they must not get along. I'm not, I, I'll, I'll resort, I don't want to call nobody no names, man. There are some people that uh, I don't care for, but I will, you'll never see me really bash them. And there's nothing good that ever comes out of that stuff. All right, if the Googans offered me a full title sponsorship like the old FLW team deals, would you take it? No, Joe, I have a little thing called dignity, and uh, I probably wouldn't, you know, and plus they never offered it to me, but uh, to be honest with you, uh, I value my friendship with people more than I do my own success, and uh, I'm, I would be willing, because my boys Casey and Milliken, they would disown me, but I like them as friends way too much. All right. Do you snap clips on glide baits like the S waiver? Uh, I'll put it like this. Mike Buka made a really good point one time. He, he's, I, I value Mike's opinion probably as much, if not more, than any other guy out there when it comes to baits. Mike says, if my bait comes with a snap, it swims better with a snap. If I don't put one on there, it swims better with that one. And that's kind of how I feel. Uh, most of the guys making the glides and stuff like that, if it comes with a split ring on it, great. But I'm not going to add anything to it because uh, I feel like they're making that bait for a reason. Now, the S-Waver is mass-produced. Um, some guys use a split ring or snap. I just tied the wreck. I think it comes with a split ring, but I don't put anything else. Do I think the Googans are making a million dollars each? Uh, I have no idea. Is the Guggen Mini Recon a knockoff of the Six Cents Mini 25? Uh, to be honest with you, they're, they're both built off the same Lucky Craft uh, Fat Mini MD. Um, all right, someone's asked me about Randy Flowers. Uh, Randy's my boy. Uh, we go way back. We used to flip Arky jigs together. Uh, That's funny, Jack Mitchell. Uh, David Dell is as crazy as Biden. Yeah. Sleepy Joe. Yeah. The Ned Rig killing thousands of the bastards is ridiculous. But you know what? I got respect for Dudley. He puts it out there. He's not worried about it. I'm cool with that. Um, 
Googans have caused so many YouTube channels to sell it. All you hear now is crack and crawl, blah, blah, blah. So, I, I, you know what's sad is I like a lot of those guys. And you know what? They're trying to make a living. So, you know what? People can call me a D-bag because I build windows and stuff like that. So, it is what it is. You know, it, that everyone's trying to make a living. Got to feed their family. You know, um, some people going to whore out Baja Blast Mountain Dew. Check us out at your local grocery store store i just got 10 percent off for saying that and some people are going to whore googan baits it is what it is and you know what if you're catching fish and getting people into fishing i don't care all right i am missing a whole lot of stuffs a whole lot of stuffs all right i have i know you like six cents but give me unbiased opinion of both the kvd square belt and six cents all right that's great will i like that question let's roll with that so Two things, uh, the KVD 1.5 and 2.5 square bills are great. For the money, they're probably the best square bills you can buy out there. Uh, they're not real expensive, they got great paint jobs, the hooks are different, and you can find them everywhere. The six cents, gonna have better paint jobs, it's got better hooks on it, you're gonna pay a little bit more money for it. They both run really good, and they catch a lot of fish. I like a lot more of the paint jobs on the six cents than the Strike King. However, there are some Strike King colors that I really like that you can't get from Six Cents. And you know what? I got a box full of both of them. And if a guy asks me which one's which one's better, I don't think one's better than the other. I think it's a personal preference. And I throw both and I'm not ashamed to say, hey, you know, on this day they're really eating the KVD 1.5. Uh, the next day, hey, they're really eating the Six Cents. And Six Cents don't care. I mean, I'd rather be honest and upfront with you. Buy what you can afford. Don't buy stuff because people shove it down your throat. Buy it whether you like it and can catch fish. Because I'll be honest, some of these six cents crankbaits I got, you know, I've never thrown. Uh, my deep cranks, I want to throw like three colors, but I always buy a bunch of crazy ones because I want to try them one day. I might find a new one I like, but there's, there's my unbiased answer that honestly, I use both. I mean, I throw a Jackal Asco when I can all the time. See me throwing them balsa baits. I got, I want to catch fish. Let's see. 500 on the live stream on a Monday night. Are you serious, guys? I'm telling you, it's got to do with this shirt. Jimmy Pruitt doing it big. The balls are back. Bait man is coming. We coming. King Fulmer on the hill. It's going to happen. So, All right. I'm getting way behind here. So, man, for the Googans to be so kid-friendly, bringing in all these into fishing, They've been making some raunchy content with certain ones. I, I kind of quit watching, man, when I seen the Lunkers video and they were drinking and driving boats. I didn't really care about that. Drink beer all you want. Don't get behind the wheel, man. Until you've lost someone close to you because of a drunk driver, you'll never understand. That is something that I don't do. I don't I don't drink when I fish. I don't operate a boat. Um, and people will say, well, it's not illegal to drink and drive. Just don't be drunk. Well, here's the deal. Uh, when you run over and kill somebody and you're and you got alcohol in your system, you're going to have to have a really expensive lure you can't afford. Even if you're not over the legal limit. So, uh, Milliken, I used to not, I used to like not anymore. He's a turd for being six cents bias after getting sponsorship. I still like, I'm, I'm going to like Mill, Milliken. You may, if you like me, I got a six cent sp sponsorship, my top spinner. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to promote Guggenbait stuff. I like their soft baits, but I'm not going to promote their stuff. Flat banger doesn't look too bad, but I'm about, it's basically the 75 uh, flat. So, anyway. It, whoa, did we just get a $50 dono in here? $50 dono? I'm got way behind, way behind. I'm so far behind in the chat. Paul Bird, I appreciate it, man. Isn't Paul Bird the actor? Anyway, thank you so much for that $50 make you holla. Paul Bird, I appreciate that. Um, you ever catch anything on the battle shad? Um, to be honest, I haven't thrown it much. I, I've got one I have thrown. It's got some teeth marks. Let's show you this guy. So I got this guy in last fall. And tossed it around for about two days. I have to take off my shirt for $50? Really? But dude, this guy, this is the OG battle shad right here. But 
it's got it's got some teeth marks back in behind it. I never could get hooked up, but hey, man, you watch what you want to. Honestly, uh, my top spinner. Um, I'm glad you're in the chat, and I never tell people what to watch. I'm not gonna tell you to boycott it or anything, except for Darren. Anyway. But that is the OG Battle Shad, and I've got that on that 10 aught flashy. But dude, I got freaking smashed. I got some teeth marks here. I just couldn't hook up with that fish. And I have, a, but man, I like this. So I went and bought a bunch because I was afraid I was going to keep hanging up. But this is the original Battle Shad, and then I've got, which actually turned into the Citizen. I've got the Citizens here. Yeah, I like purple. Dude, uh, so I've reached out to Mike Gilbert, and uh, Gilbert, I think he's busy pouring baits, but he said he would definitely do something, so. Darian's trying to mow my, my lawn with SNL, yeah? Let's see if Darian got 605 people on a Monday night. I really don't care, to be honest with you. Uh, it's cool, whatever. If I'm not streaming, somebody else is going to stream. Yeah, uh, I will pass it along to um, Gilbert. I'll message him and say, hey, man, I've got a lot of people asking you, talk about the Battle Shad, stuff like that. Love love to get him on here. So, What is a good rod for swim baits? I want to get into them. Uh, starter rod, Dobbin 795 Fury, 119. If you really like the Fury, you want something bigger. Uh, oh, I do like Darren. I'm just messing with him. But I am going to get a little upset if he brands Saturday Night Live because... We can go back and check. I always say check the history books. And, um, you know, I've been, been streaming on Saturday nights for like three or four, two, at least three years. But it's all good, man. Do what you got to do. Go make your dollars. I'll do my thing. Go Vols. Um, honestly, this doesn't need to be family viewing. Um, yeah, I'll be honest, you know, my channel here, I don't, uh, I don't cater to little kids and I'm not trying to, I do like having Bateman Jr. on here. Uh, when he's here, I'm not going to, you know, do anything off the wall. And I, I don't really think my content is that crazy, really. Paul Bird, I really appreciate that $50 out of nowhere. I wasn't paying attention. So if he asked a question. Jack Mitchell, he's in Nebraska thing, so hidden adult language. So I, I like to be a little bit sneaky with that. So, so Dobbins seven ninety five Fury is a great starter rod. Um, someone mentioned Ducket. Um, they actually make a really good uh, rod because uh, it's good in parabolic. You can buy like their um, Micro Magic flipping stick. It's good for like hollow bellies because it's very parabolic. I like a parabolic rod for the, the hollow bellies or exposed jig head. Now, I'm not talking like Ospreys. I'm talking like Bass Tricks, uh, True Bass. Uh, Our rod makes a really good hollow belly rod, too, Bass and Panda. They make some good stuff. I like Matt Newman. He would definitely do something. So I'm not going to lie. I'm going to have to bleep my bow fishing uh, video, Drake Toby. Uh, it's kind of going to be a little, I mean, Dude, catching bass, catching jaints really excites me. But you put me in a bow fishing boat and we start shooting at invasive species. Yeah, I get a little, get a little, get a little crazy. A little Rambo comes out. Dude, I could probably get Sean on here. Does my kid, uh, my kid uh, likes fishing, but uh, I'll be honest, if Brooks don't want to go fishing, I don't take him. I'm not going to be that guy. I mean, my dad took me fishing a lot when I was little, but I wanted to go. And uh, some good information. Um, I, someone told me, um, my fishing partner, he said, dude, you don't have to drag your kid out going fishing all the time. He said, you'll know when to take him when you leave and say you're going fishing. And he follows you out in the driveway and says, dad, I want to go without you asking. Well, that's happened to Brooks, and that's when I take him. I don't tell him, hey, man, you got to get out here with me. When he wants to go, he lets me know, and I'm cool with that. So, Dude, I'll be honest. The skeet reach rods really aren't that bad. I don't see how Luke Duncan, uh, you know, ever even 
cash to check using them, but I ended up using one the other day, and it's really not that bad. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to hate on Duncan and Skeet for using them rods. They're really not too bad. I mean, Skeet's won a lot of money on them, so obviously they must be decent. Uh, Jack, as far as I was told, uh, the price on their baits would stay about the same. Uh, obviously, we've got, you know, anytime you change stuff like that. So, holy cow, uh, almost 700 viewers. But here's the deal, guys. I want to stay on, but I can't tonight. Uh, you guys with me? Uh, Duncan switched to Abu. Uh, yes, he did. Although I did, and Luke, please don't hate me. I love you, buddy. Go Vols. I saw an evergreen combat stick in his video. Those are really sweet rods. So, but, uh, if you're wondering about Six Cents and Secret Bait, this is the kid that started it. Uh, well, yeah, I appreciate you calling me a kid. That kind of makes me feel like I'm buying a can of dip and getting carded. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gambit. Um, uh, but anyway, tomorrow night, we're going to, we'll bust something out. Y'all give me, uh, you know, maybe we'll do another giveaway tomorrow night. I don't know, but I'll be here. Uh, I'm going to try to get a video uploaded sometime for tomorrow, but hopefully I don't mess my YouTube algorithm up if I upload a video then stream. So Anyway, thanks guys for joining. Um, it is a Monday night and we have almost 700 viewers. I don't know what I'm doing on this channel that makes it that popular, but guys, Go make sure you tell your family you love them. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, I'll go make a thumbnail. Check out my boy, Andrew Mullins, Balsa Concepts. Gosh, this thing's so sexy. I don't even want to put it in the box, but I will. Check those. Check him out. Six Cents Fishing. Use the code BAITMAN. Get 10% off. Screenshot me. Uh, I'll put you in the giveaway. See you guys tomorrow night.